This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. This is Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And today we have a very, very important show, especially if you are rich or planning on getting rich or want to stay rich. It's a very important program, and I'm very, I'm, I'm great because I'm fantastic because I have my team with me. One of them is Blair Singer. We just did his program for Summit, How to Be a Leader. And now our, our second member of the Rich Dad Infinite team is Garrett Sutton. He's our corporations attorney, and he specializes in asset protection. So the reason this is so important is because today, and I suspect the economy is gonna get worse. And when the economy gets worse, people look for somebody to steal from. And as you, you see it all the time, there's a turn, I mean, every place I drive now, there's billboards, you know, wreck, need a check, call me. You know, they're looking for somebody with money to sue. Any comments that I you see? I, I just saw that billboard coming in here this morning. I go, oh my God. And the guy had the, the cheesiest grin on him. It just gave me the creeps. <laughs> yeah. And so there's, there's always three sides to a coin, heads, tails, and the edge. And Garrett is our, on the other side of the coin from those other predatory ambulance chasing attorneys. So Garrett, welcome to the Rich Dad radio show. Thank you, Robert. Thanks uh, for being here as well, Blair. It's a great to be with you both. And yeah, it's interesting, Robert, that the year that the Supreme Court allowed attorney advertising where attorneys could solicit for car accidents was the same year that Wyoming allowed for the first ever LLC. So uh, it's kind of funny that that happened in 1977, attorney advertising and protection from LLCs. What is an LLC for the layman? a limited liability company. It's the most popular entity uh, now available. Uh, it offers asset protection and, and uh, flexible taxation. It's a great way to protect your assets. Yeah, and one of the ways I, I met Garrett was because there was, a, I live in, Garrett lives in Reno, Nevada, and I live in Phoenix, Arizona, but there was a case where this entrepreneur built a huge lumber company but his daughter hit somebody in the crosswalk with her car and he lost everything because the, the, the turn is just, but he had a corporation. He was, he thought he was protected, but that kind of woke me up. I said, oh my God, this guy has a co He has his corporation. He's not that stupid, very sophisticated guy, but his daughter runs somebody over down in the, in the crosswalk and the court took it to the father. Why, why does that happen, Garrett? Well, if you don't follow the corporate formalities, if you don't follow what the uh, courts and the legislatures want you to do, uh, an attorney can pierce through that corporation, that lumberyard corporation, and reach the personal assets of the owners. And so, you know, following these formalities are really easy. It's really dramatic if you don't, though. You can lose all of your personal assets. Well, we've got, we, we got to go using, using attorney talk. So like, this is the Rich Dad Show. We keep it dog shit simple, okay? All right. So, so the point here is a lot of times people say, well, I have a corporation or they have this, but they don't follow the rules. Or like you say, a lot of people, my, my poor dad always said this, everything's in my name. The house is in my name. The car is in my name. And that's, that's when you call them sole proprietors. And what does sole stand for? Someday you'll lose everything. <laughs> and as the economy worsens and, you know, we have our fearless leader, Biden, saving us from Russia. Um, and inflation is going through the roof, which inflation kills the poor and middle class. Lawsuits will increase, which is as possibly true. That is absolutely true, Robert. In times of stress, uh, litigation goes up. People have time to look for people to sue. And you better have your assets protected before you're sued. Any comments on that, Blair? Well, you know, most small guys in the S quadrant don't even think about it. They don't even, it's not even, doesn't even cross their minds. And they can get wiped out instantly. They can be stolen from. They can be uh, ripped off and, and sued. So it's something that some most people don't even look at. And then Garrett knows because Garrett's been intimate with my, my, my asset protection guy a lot of the times. But Garrett won't mention any names, but my own attorney was stealing from me. And that's that, the problem. 
Yeah, that's a problem. You've got to have a good team around you, Robert, and, and you certainly do now. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting. I mean, just because a person's an attorney or accountant doesn't mean they're honest. Nope, that is absolutely correct. And so that's why it's good to have Garrett, who lives in Reno, he's arm's distance away from Rich Dad, and he's not personally involved with the personalities. And then, anything you want to say about that? Well, and you want a team. I mean, I do the asset protection in the corporations, and if you need an attorney that does employment, you need a team. But you also need people you're comfortable with, Robert. And, you know, you had some some bad apples, and, and you know, it, it takes a while to get the right team together. Right. And, I, and Ken McElroy, who's my real estate guy, he always says um, it's the best, some of his best partnerships came from bad partners. You know, best deals came from bad deals. And so because I had two crooked attorneys and one crooked CPA, I started looking for better professional help. And so that's why, um, so when you talk about piercing the corporate veil, you talk about formalities. I mean, you've, when you form a corporation, a lot of times people say, well, I, you know, I formed the corporation or I have an LLC, I have an S corporation, I have a C corporation, but they don't follow the rules after that. Is that correct? Well, a lot of times, Robert, and you mentioned this in your foreword uh, to Veil Not Fail, you, you know, people set it up online and they don't know that they have these ongoing formalities. And then they learn the hard way that you're supposed to do meeting minutes. You're supposed to do tax returns. You're supposed to follow these rules. And in 50 percent of all cases, people are able to pierce through the veil and get at your personal asset. So clearly half the people are not following the rules. So, and they're not hard to follow. That's the issue. I mean, it's so easy to follow these rules. If you don't, you lose everything. So when you talk about veil, what does that mean to you as an attorney? Well, you know, we think of veil as kind of a traditional covering for a woman's face, and that's what it is in the corporation. It does give you a little bit of protection, but it's not like a, you know, an iron wall. I mean, if you don't maintain the veil, People can pierce through it and reach your personal asset. So it's a it's a manner of protection, but it's not a steel wall. And the thing that's kind of interesting is that um, I have a lot of friends who are the ambulance chasers, and they're a different breed of cat, right? So when they see somebody who has their LLC or their C corporation, S corporation, but they haven't followed the procedures, the, that you know what happens to the veil. It, it falls and they can then pierce through the veil and there's no veil there and they can get at all your personal assets. So Garrett's new book is called Veil Not Fail. And he says it's not that much trouble, but for somebody like me, it's a pain in the butt. So I pay Garrett a fee just to make sure that all of our, we have, we have multiple corporations, that they have to be protected. You protect the corporation from other, other attorneys, right? Absolutely. And these fees are just like another form of insurance. You just want to have, you want the insurance of a corporation and you want the insurance of a, of a properly maintained corporation. It's not expensive to do. And again, it's really hazardous if you don't. And a lot of people want to save money and they lose everything. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. Any comments, there, Blair? <laughs> well, yeah, I was I was just going to say you, what you mentioned, Garrett, is that a lot of these people get their corporation formed online. Okay, they don't have a relationship. Um, I, you know, if you're going to move into the B quadrant or you go, you really want to protect something, you need to have a team you can consult with, somebody that you trust, learn to trust them. I mean, I don't know who's at the other end of that of that online form I just filled out. I don't know who that what their credibility is. But, you know, the number of times that I sit down with you and talk about a situation, talk it through, and you send me in the right direction, these are critical things that, that an entrepreneur needs to do. You don't sh shuck that off and say, well, I don't have enough money to do it because, like you said, it can cost – it can not only cost you your assets, but some of your, your hard-earned intellectual property and all that stuff can be all ripped off and stolen by other people that have more capital than you. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll put Sarah on the spot right here. Sorry, you just you, you you just bought your rental property, right? Yes. What do you have protecting it? It's in an LLC. And do you have somebody like Garrett following up on it? Yes, we have an attorney in Indiana that took care of that for us. But is he following the procedures? So far. <laughs> so Garrett, how does somebody like Sarah check on make sure that they're following the procedures? 
Well, we want to make sure that when the corporation was formed, not only did you have the articles, but you have the operating agreement, the meeting minutes, the issuance of certificates, all of that is important. On an annual basis, you need to have meeting minutes showing that you had a meeting. A lot of promoters, Robert, say that with an LLC, you don't need to have a meeting. And when you get into court, the judge and jury goes, wait a minute, how do you run a business, an LLC or a corporation for 10 years without a meeting? You know, it's just not realistic. And so you need to follow all these formalities. So can, um, let's say I live in um, Texas and you in Reno, can I hire you? Yes, we set up uh, and maintain entities, LLCs and corporations in all 50 states. So Sarah has her property in Indiana, right? That's right. So can she hire you? She should hire me. (laughs) <laughs> that's i hear that all the time and but garrett garrett puts uh, says it best he says you can't put your seat belt on after you crash <laughs> and that's all a lot of people do so well I was, i'm driving without a seat belt but poof, you go through the windshield and you go what happened well and if you've been sued robert it's too late to set up an entity Right. Like you say, I mean, it just, the court is not going to give you the protection. The attorney's going to have a field day with the fact that you try to, it's really called a fraudulent conveyance or transaction. You can't do a fraudulent transaction trying so just, to put your personal assets into a corporation after you've been sued. Can't do it, huh? So the court doesn't like that. The, the court is like a bull seeing red when you do that. Okay. And Garrett, just a quick question. Is it, I think I read it in one of your books. You talk about um, the need from se- to separate your personal from business right off the bat, because there is, if there's any commingling, you know, if there's any blurry lines between me as a person and my LLC, that puts us at risk as well. Is that accurate? That is absolutely true. You are not going to use your personal bank account to fund that Indiana LLC. You need a separate Indiana LLC bank account to you know, show that there's a distinction between business and person. And even, even my credit cards, I have personal and I have business. Right. So I just keep them separate. Right. Any comments there, Blair? Yeah, I just, the, the education that Garrett provides is priceless um, because you work so hard to build whatever you're building and it can be gone in an instant with, for no good reason other than just being careless. And so, uh, I in the in the past when I started my businesses I said well I can't afford that I can't protect this and you know what it always comes it comes back particularly if you and it and here's the funny thing it comes back if you're successful if you're not successful nobody's going to pay any attention to you but once you become successful then you become a target Amen Amen Absolutely Amen Now so another I, facet of this Robert and, and Blair is that you can reverse pierce so you if someone has no money and you have a judgment against them, and their corporation has money, you can reverse Pierce to get after the corporation's money. So we have a chapter in that. I know it's complicated, Blair, but just know that if a corporation, I mean, a person owes you money, and their corporation has plenty of it, you can reach it through reverse piercing. So when we come back, we'll be talking more about Garrett Sutton. His, his latest book is Veil, Not Fail. And um, it's like it's like the southern border wall, you know, that Trump built, but uh, Biden pierced it (laughs) and they're pouring through right now. So you really don't want to do that. So when we come back, (laughs) I will talk about how you build a strong southern border wall. We'll be right back. Inflation is at a 40 year high. The Fed is tightening up and top firms predict returns under 5 percent for the next decade. No wonder a recent J.P. Morgan report declared alternative assets are no longer optional. And of all the platforms for alternative investing, there's one that's a no-brainer. It's called Masterworks. Masterworks has solidified itself as the platform for investing in contemporary art. You can access exclusive investments from names like Banksy and Picasso for just a fraction of what billionaires pay to diversify their portfolios. Since 2020, Masterworks has sold three paintings, with each returning over 30% net IRR to investors. And their new offerings usually sell out in hours. 30%? That's pretty wild. If you want to get in early, go to masterworks.io, create an account, check out what they have, and invest in their offerings. And our subscribers get to skip their waitlist. 
at the special link in the description below. Welcome, Robert here. Sorry for the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. You can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube. And you can, all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them simply because we're an education company. We don't recommend or sell anything. We don't make stock tips or real estate tips. But if you listen to this program, again, you'll learn twice as much. This is repetition. But more importantly, your friends, family member, and business associates who do not know why they have to pay for a corporation's attorney and all this other stuff because they're cheap, you have a problem with a cheap, with a cheap partner or if you're a cheap or your husband or wife cheap. And the reason I say that is because Exactly as Blair said, when I invented the shoe pocket, which was a wallet, I didn't have money to um, patent it. So I figured, well, I could outgun everybody and just outrun them. So exactly as Blair says, everything was fine until I got successful. And the moment I got successful, my little shoe pocket was ripped off. So being cheap with attorneys is really, really foolish. And that's why, you know, Gary's been my personal corporation's attorney for years and years and years. I call him, he advises me how to do this, how to do that, because I do not want to make a stupid mistake on this. Before I go on, why are you in Nevada? Is there a reason Nevada is better than California? Oh, Robert, there's so many reasons now. Uh, (laughs) Nevada has great asset protection. It's the, one of the top states for forming uh, corporations and LLCs, along with Wyoming and Delaware. Uh, as Blair knows, I like to ski. So that's another reason I'm here by Lake Tahoe. Uh, but no, Nevada is a great state for business, for protection, uh, and for not many regulations compared to California. So let's say I'm, I'm a businessman in Japan or in Mexico. Can I still form an LLC or a corporation in Nevada? You can. Uh, you know, in, in certain countries, uh, Panama, the Wyoming or Nevada LLC is accepted. Uh, but if you're going to be doing business in the United States from Japan or another country, certainly a Nevada corporation, which offers great asset protection, is the way to go. And we have a number of foreign clients, Robert, who set up in Nevada for their American activities. Right. And Nevada is better for tax reasons too, isn't it? It is. There's uh, no income or corporate tax because of gaming. We, you know, please come to Nevada and drop a bunch of money in the casinos so I don't have to pay tax. We have the, no income or, pers- or corporate tax. And you, were you originally from California? I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. And you saw the light, didn't you? I got out in 1989. And I'm leaving, I'm, I'm, Kim and I are leaving Hawaii because it's right. going more hardcore, radical left. You know, it's frightening. California is putting in all these laws that have the effect of driving people out. Right. And in Hawaii, what's happening now, you know, what, what a real democracy is, in theory, a democracy is something that's run by the poor. But you don't want to, if you're going to be rich, talk to Garrett. <laughs> You want to and stay rich. So like, again, the name of the book is Veil Not Fa- uh, Fail, F-A-I-L, by Garrett Sutton Esquire. Any other comments there? Well, we talk about a number of tips, Robert. They're not hard to follow, as I've mentioned, in the book. You want to make sure you have a registered agent. You want to make sure you have a separate bank account. Uh, you want to make sure that you provide corporate notice when you sign a check. It should be in the name of the LLC or Inc. instead of in your personal name. These are all simple things that you can do that we cover in the book. Uh, But if you have a corporation or an LLC right now and you're not following these rules, you need to take a step back, analyze where you're failing, and then read the book, Fail Not Fail, because all the tips and strategies are in there. So what do you think about these ambulance chasers? You know, like I I know a lot of them personally, and they, they, they can't wait. Well, the the system incentivizes them, Robert, and we're not going to change that system. The system also allows us to have LLCs and corporations. So I always recommend that my clients have a personal umbrella policy of insurance, home and auto, an extra million dollars of coverage is only 400 a year. Then have all of your assets in LLCs. If there's a car wreck, which is one of the biggest risks out there, 
There's plenty of insurance for the attorneys to go after. And then your other assets are in LLCs. It's not a good use of an attorney's time who's on a contingency. They only get paid when they collect. It's not a good use of his time to fight through a Nevada or Wyoming LLC. So a combination of insurance and entities are what you need in this day and age. So what you're saying is the ambulance chaser wants to go after the insurance company because you have insurance. It's easy for them. They know how to get at the insurance money. And the insurance companies are just going to get rid of it. They just pay. Any comments, Blair? It's a whole system. It's a whole, it's a whole ecosystem of its own. You know, and if you try to, and, and if you're unprotected, it's kind of like a gold mine for somebody else, is what I'm hearing you say. And and the the steps you've you've steered us through those steps, they're really pretty simple. And if you ignore them, you do it at your own pay, at your own peril. Right. And right. Time- and again, fifty percent of the time they're piercing the veil, which means a lot of people aren't following these rules. So. Um- what do you, th- I mean, are there people actually going online and filing a, a corporation? Like, I won't mention the name of the company, but they're always advertising. It, it that- happens all the time, Robert. The people feel like they are getting protected, but you don't know what you don't know. And these online companies are not telling you that you have these ongoing requirements to stay protected. So if you set up your entity online, Go check and make sure that you have all the paperwork, you're doing the annual minutes, you're paying the annual fees. Too many people are not. And so that's what Veil Not Fail is about your book, is because you still have to follow the rules. Right. And this isn't taught in school and the online providers don't give you the information. You've got to get this information on your own or you're going to lose everything the, the hard way. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's really kind of a nasty world. You know, the way, way we found out the hard way when Kim and I first started out, we had a tenant slip and fall on our sidewalk. Holy mackerel. And this guy came and found Kim and I knocked on our doors. I mean, we had no protection at all. We owned the property. We thought we were Donald Trump with our first apartment house. This guy, this guy was looking for us. And he knocked on our doors. And that's when I said, we better start protecting ourselves. Right. And another thing, Robert, you don't want your personal address and name to be out there on the Internet. You want to have a registered agent whose name is out there so that that tenant is not coming to your door. That must have been very unsettling for you and Kim, Robert. Oh, yeah, because we were planning on getting really, really rich. And I don't know how many entities we have, but we have multiples, don't we, Garrett? You do. We, every time we buy something new, there's a new entity being formed. Right. What is that called? Pardon me? What is that called? You know, like uh, I just bought another large, large asset, but immediately names are coming up. We call Garrett. It's got to be set up. Talk to Tom, our accountant. Well, it's called prudent. I mean, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to protect these ent- your assets right off the bat. If you have an asset in your individual name for three months, and something bad happens during that three month period, you are personally responsible for that claim. Don't wait for three months because then it'll be three years. You need to put that asset into an LLC right off the bat. Yeah, and because of Garrett, like I said, you know, Kim and I just did a major big time investment, the biggest in my lifetime. But immediately, first thing, what's the name of this thing? And we, it's not it's not called Robert and Kim's biggest asset. You know, I mean, it's just some little obnoxious name. Yeah, right. it's your favorite street or river or whatever. You know, you just don't use your personal name on those entities because you know people are out there looking. The more you have, as you said, Robert, the bigger the target you are. And this society is geared towards litigation. That we're not going to change. And what do you personally? Th- I mean, I know you like those ambulance chasers because they give you a lot of business. But they're a different breed of cat, aren't they? They are. And and some of them are friends of mine here in Reno. And, you know, they're good guys, but the system incentivizes them to go after everybody. And, you know, that's that's the life they live. And then I don't know how many entities and sub-entities we have, but you know, God, I would never do them. That's true, Robert. You have quite a few entities. And again, you've been prudent. You've you've learned the hard way after that one tenant issue. 
And, you, you know, so many people come to me and they have learned the hard way and now they're going to take steps to protect themselves. Well, right. don't go through that experience. Set up these entities right off the bat and then take the steps to maintain them properly so they can't pierce the veil. And so that's the name of your latest book, Veil, V-E-I-L, Not Fail. So We don't want your veil to fail. And we give you all the tips and strategies so your veil stays strong. So, Sarah, now that you're entering the world of... I'm terrified. <laughs> no, but I do have a quick question because we have a, you, two out of your however many you know team members here. How important is it for your attorney to work with your CPA or your, you know, um, I can't think of anything else right now, but for your team members to work together, Garrett, because... Um, I will admit I've heard, well, my CPA says that's legal. Uh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't ask me to do your taxes. You know, I'm not going to do your taxes. So uh, you raise a good point, though, Sarah. The, the CPA and the attorney need to be on the same call. You know, all the time I hear people say, well, my, my CPA said this and my attorney said this. And you play this game of ping pong. Get the two of them on the same call with you and get all the questions answered all at once. That's one of the reasons uh, what we have with Rich Dad Advisor books is because like Garrett is our real advisor and Tom Realwright is our real accountant and they know each other. We call it, we, we collude, we collaborate. We also comply. We want to make sure we don't break any of the rules because it's just not worth it. I mean, why why do what we do just to lose it to some stupid trying to save a couple of bucks? You know, it's ridiculous. Well, there's too it. much money to be made by following the rules. You know, just follow the rules and you're going to do fine. And these corporate formalities that we mentioned, again, they're not hard to follow. If you don't follow them, a judge or jury is going to say, I'm sorry, but you did, you know, you set up the corporation to be protected. So, and all we do is ask you to follow these simple rules and you did it. So we're going to pierce the veil and hold you personally responsible. It's so easy to avoid that. The other thing too is reason Garrett handles all of, cause we have so many of them. So I have one entity here, another entity here. If one gets hit, this one's still safe. So is that right. the theory? That's the theory. So you have a duplex in one LLC and a fourplex in another LLC. If you get sued on the duplex, they can't reach the fourplex. It's in a separate LLC, which also means you don't want to put 10 properties into one LLC. If they sue on the duplex, they can reach the other nine properties as well. So you want to segregate the assets between various LLCs. You also have a brokerage account. You can put that into an LLC as well to get much better protection than holding brokerage assets, gold and silver, et cetera, in your individual name. And like it when you go, we, we have, always have a meetings here at the Rich Dad office in Old Town, but the building is not in my name, is it? No, nope. I wouldn't let the, you do that. <laughs> and the business is not in my name. No, it's not, Robert. And so if you understand what we're saying here, my poor dad always said, oh, it's in our name. That is really poor man's thinking. The rich well, one. And that was back in the day. Everybody wanted to have assets in their individual name. This was before the country got litigious. And, you know, that's how people operated. But in this day and age, you really need to have a combination of that umbrella insurance policy and these LLCs to protect yourself. And Garrett has watched and Blair has watched and Kim and I struggled because our first accountant and attorney we hired turned out to be crooks. And it's, it's tough. It will learn the hard way. It costs us tens of millions of dollars to get rid of them. So uh, that's, that's why it's, you know, I've learned very, have an objective point of view outside of the business because otherwise it's too emotional. You know, we're, we're friends. I trust him. You know, he's a good guy. I know his kids and all this shit. And the guy's siphoning cash out the back door. Well, you can't be afraid to upgrade your team. You know, I mean, you're a coach and you've got to have people on your team that you can trust. And if someone isn't returning your phone calls, isn't doing the work you ask them to do, you, you got to replace them on the team and get a new team member. Right. And that's one of the hardest things to do because you get into these relationships. 
Right. So, Garrett, you know, I really want to thank you for your contribution to everybody's education here. I trust everybody will listen to it, get your book, Veil, Not Fail, Garrett's other books. What other books do you have that people should get into? Well, Start Your Own Corporation gets you into the idea of why you form these entities. Uh, Loopholes of Real Estate talks about the tax and legal strategies of investing in real estate. And then Veil, Not Fail allows you to understand why you have to maintain these entities to stay protected. And so we're, Rich does a complete education company, but the benefit that I have is I have great, great teams around me and we work together, but more importantly, they're my greatest asset. You know, who's my great, like Blair is my asset. He does this, you know, this thing on summit leadership, crucial because Blair comes in and talks to our company, right, Sarah? That's right. What, I mean, Blair did the PERT thing. How did that? PERT. I love it. <laughs> I still think of that. Now. So Blair comes in and teaches Pert, which is in Summit Leadership and all this. But I don't have to be an attorney, but I have to know what questions to ask the attorney. And that's why you have your books. Final, fi, go ahead, final, final word, Garrett, please. Well, final word is that they don't teach this in school, Robert. You know, you have to get this information on your own. And if you walk into an attorney's office without knowing what a corporation or an LLC is, you're going to be spending a lot of extra money to be educated. So that's why your series of books, Robert, has been terrific for so many of my clients. They come to me, they're somewhat educated on what they need. So the books have just been terrific. And I, I, I just really am grateful to be a part of the Rich Dad series. Well, thank you very much. Final words, Ripplar? Yeah, I just am reminded what you always say, that business is a team sport. You know, and you got to have the best people on your team. And what you said, Garrett, a few minutes ago, you got to be willing to upgrade. You got to be willing to upgrade and take them to the next level. If your tax accountant's not doing what it needs to, what they need to do, or your attorney's not following up, I mean, I look forward to. I get those little messages from your office. Hey, corporate minutes, ready? Remember that? You know, it's like, oh my God, thank you so much. I would have never. I would. It was so out of my mind, right? So it requires a team. And so thank you. Um, it's an honor to be part of the team with you. Right. And your team is your greatest asset, not the duplex. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, final words. Final words is, as Garrett had mentioned, at minimum, you should know what questions to ask your attorney. And Garrett's Start Your Own Corporation book is a great place to start, to start educating you, yourself with the verbiage and language. You know, what's the difference between an S corporation and an LLC? Um, and then you can take that step of finding the attorney. So I, rec I highly recommend those books just to get started. And I'm really proud of Sarah because she's following the rich dad philosophy and time and she's buying her properties and she's becoming a capitalist, which I'm proud of her for. How's it feel to be a capitalist there, Sarah? Real good. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. All right, so all of you, uh, thank you for checking out the Rich Dad Radio Show. Get Blair's book, Summit Leadership by Blair Singer, S-I-N-G-E-R, and Garrett's latest book, Veil Not Fail. And remember, your greatest asset is your team around you. So thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. <laughs>